Hello, I am Ryan Ellis, and this is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. This is arguably the most famous chapter of Ecclesiastes. It has the oft-quoted time aphorisms in the beginning of the chapter. The rest of the chapter is nice too, and just as pithy. To start, we conclude with the first of three parts of Ecclesiastes called The Limitations of Work and Wisdom, covering verses 1-3 to 3-8. There are four sections, and we are in the final section called The Enigmas of Work and Wisdom, covering verses 2-18 to 3-8. Verses 1 through 8 of chapter 3 talk about the enigmas of wisdom. There is a proper time for everything. The truly wise know that all of their times are in God's hands. The enigma of wisdom is that you can't expect to do the same thing all the time. This inevitable variety and changing around of life is the business or busyness that God has given man to be busy with. I have long believed that God is a God of opposites. We see that in verses 1 through 8 where there is a time for everything and it's opposite. Sometimes you speak, other times you're silent, sometimes you love, and other times you hate. What hatred is this? Jesus said to love your enemies. It may be the righteous hatred that David had for those that were against God. Psalms 139, 21-24 Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That last line, lead me in the way everlasting, should be in an old-time hymn. So if you write music, throw it in there. Anyways, we see that David, right after saying all this hate stuff, is asking God to tell him where he's wrong. Search me, O God. The biggest ante you can up to is to challenge God, and David is challenging God to see if David is wrong right after he said that he hated those that hate God. The next part of the book of Ecclesiastes talks about work and fear before God whose work endures, covering verses 3-9 to 6-7. There are four sections, and we start with a section called God as Creator and Judge, covering verses 3-9 to 21. God has created both man and beast, which entitles him to decide what we should do. God will judge us after we die and we may face some of that judgment within our lifetime. The righteous and the wicked both have sinned and will be judged for it. Ecclesiastes 3, 14 and 15. I perceive whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it so that the people fear before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already has been. And God seeks what has been driven away. God's acts are permanent and were set in stone in eternity past, persistent until eternity future. Moreover, God's statute of limitations on you repenting of your sin to go to heaven limited to while you are alive is final. Because you don't know when you'll die, make right with God now. Admit you're a sinner, believe Jesus Christ, who is God's Son, saved you from your sin, and commit your life to following Christ and then you're going to go to heaven. And that's it. It's as simple as that. We briefly enter the next section of the first part of Ecclesiastes in the last verse of the chapter. The section is called Contentment or Envy, covering verses 322, the last verse of chapter 3, until 416, funnily enough, the last verse of chapter 4. The chapter finishes off with Solomon again, and not for the last time, telling man to be content with his toil, because that is all man has. Ecclesiastes 322. So I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work, for that is his lot. Who can bring him to see what will be after him? You'll see the envy on the earth that combats its opposite, which is contentment, in the next fourth chapter of Ecclesiastes. Here are five questions for Ecclesiastes 3. 1. This chapter, do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? 2. Where does Jesus tie in with this chapter? <laughs> 3. How does the first part of Ecclesiastes 3.5, talking about disposing of and piling together stones, apply to today without being too literal or figurative? Ecclesiastes 3.5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. 4. Why does Solomon bother reminding us that we are dust? What is our other alternative origin, whether true or not, that we'd rather choose to acknowledge over our dust antecedents, and what would that alternate origin say different about us? Ecclesiastes 3.20 All go to one place. All are from the dust, and to dust all return. 5. Ecclesiastes 3.4 says, A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Have you emoted today? Where does your range of emotion cross into your range of conscience? Thank you for watching. I hope this blessed you. Pray for me. Goodbye.